So we're going to start with our first speaker for this evening, and that is Beverly Murray. She is doing speech number nine, uh, which is to persuade with power. The speech title is Power Tools, and the purpose is to inform. To complete a job, you often use tools. Toastmasters, <coughs> excuse me, need tools to build their speaking <coughs> This speech explores a few tools that might assist in powerful and persuasive public speaking. Please help me welcome Beverly. The most persuasive speech <coughs> I've ever heard occurs every Sunday morning when millions of pastors all over the country step into their actual or proverbial pulpits. <coughs> Just like a scalp scalpel is a tool for a surgeon or a hammer is a tool for a carpenter, or an artist mat uses a brush as a tool. The pastor's tool is his sermon. I would present to you that sermons present a wonderful opportunity for us as Toastmasters to learn about some persuasive tools that we can use to make our speeches more powerful. The first thing that in the first element of pastoral speaking that I want to talk about, I would call the law of ethos, and it's all about character. Has anyone ever heard the expression, I'd rather see you live a sermon than give one? <laughs> your character makes your speech more powerful. Take, for example, Eddie Long. Is anybody familiar with that name? Yeah. He's a pastor of a mega church in Georgia, and he took a selfie of his naked half of his body, the top half, and mailed it to a 15-year-old, emailed it to a 15-year-old. <clears throat> his church has quite diminished from what it once was <clears throat> because his ethos has changed, and people don't find him as powerful. Don't get offended, but take the Catholic church. The more scandal that they had with young boys, there was some negative impact on people's feelings about the ethos of the organization. The second characteristic, I might want to call pathos, but it's really about knowing your audience. It is about understanding that each person that you speak to, each of you have feelings, you have motivations, you have fears, and connecting with that. One of the things that you probably don't know about me is at one point I wanted to go to divinity school. And one of the things that I learned was about if you speak to broken hearts, you always have an audience. Because we all have broken hearts. At some point in our lives, we can connect. The third element of speaking, I might call the law of logos. Being logical having content, having one thought follow the other. Now, a lot of pastors get really fiery, you know, they're in the run, they're saying all kinds of stuff, but where there's no substance, there really is not the power. Just because I'm saying it loudly doesn't mean I'm saying anything. So the best meatloaf I've ever eaten starts with good, ground beef. The substance has to be there for the power and the persuasiveness. A fifth element is called arga. And that's a Greek word that means marketplace. You've got to know your venue. You've got to know who you're speaking to and where you're speaking. Because the way that I might speak at the presidential retreat at Camp David, if I were preaching there, might be very different from the way I would speak at a big church in Inglewood. You have to know the venue, the culture, in order to okay, kind of persuade. For example, as a Toastmaster, I 
can say CC, and for those of you who are guests, that's competent communicator. But that lets you know that I know the language. And it kind of lets you know that I know Toastmasters and it gives me some credibility and some persuasiveness and some power. The last one is synergy. Think about alignment, okay? And think about putting things together so that they follow one another. So my speech could have too much pathos and not enough ethos, too much logos and absolutely no order. And it wouldn't be a good balance because in order to be powerful, you also have to have some contrast. Think about this. When I wanted to be a pastor, I wanted to take a class. And the class was $5,000. Wow. And it was for a week, but it was still $5,000. Well, they had some tapes of the class, and the tapes were $249. Now, compare and contrast, and you know, those $249 tapes didn't seem so hot when I contrasted them with the $5,000 class. So in order to have power and persuasiveness as a Toastmaster, Let's apply some of those elements as I wrap up the speech. The first is ethos. How can you be more credible? You need to tell us about who you are, how well you know your topic. Maybe you want to tell us how experienced you are. Or perhaps you want to tell us, like I told you, that you know, I've kind of been to divinity school. <clears throat> or if I were telling you about my law career, maybe I'd tell you that never lost a jury trial. I went to the oldest law school. I was on law review and new court. None of that is true. But if I wanted to tell you, it would certainly be on my ethos, right? Mm -hmm. All right, logos. Logical steps, okay? Making sure that your transitions are good. Making sure that you have some level of what do I want to call it? You have some level of accomplishment in terms of speaking. Sometimes I get up here, I'll tell you the truth. I don't always know what I'm talking about, but you don't know. So since you don't know, <laughs> I've become your expert just through the way I stand or talk or whatever that might be. I'm going to wrap up my speech using some of the things that we've talked about, and I need your help. Now, when I point to you, all I need you to do is say persuade with power, okay? If you have enough ethos in your speech, you can persuade, persuade with power. power. And I need you to pump that up. <laughs> if you have enough logos, you can persuade, persuade with power. power. There you go. If you're very conscious of your art, you can persuade with power. I feel like I'm at church. <laughs> you have enough contracts. You can persuade with power. Now, last but not least, and this is certainly not to offend anyone, I have a very firm belief that faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. And no speech that you ever give will be complete without the gift that truly keeps on giving the gift of love. Thank you. Love, love.